Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Tom, welcoming you to another study in the Word. I want to thank you for joining me. This is number five in Saving Our Marriages, and I hope you enjoy it. In fact, if you do enjoy this video, why don't you share it with a Facebook friend or uh, maybe email it to a friend. Um, I want you to open in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 21, and I'm going to say this um, to you, that we are going to do what is right um, concerning starting out with the women folk and I don't want to sound like I'm picking on the women but girls first and uh, I was taught that when I was growing up and we're going to do that first because the Bible when it comes to this particular passage of scripture talks to the women first and then begins to talk to the men who hold a, a very a much more uh, um, uh, a difficult role than the women do actually in the marriage uh, uh, arrangement because uh, of things we'll share with you. But in Ephesians chapter 5, I'll be reading out of the Amplified Bible today <clears throat> some really important uh, uh, scriptures. If you'll look down with me, please, at verse 21. Again, out of the Amplified Bible. Be subject one to another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Wives, be subject, be submissive, submissive and adapt yourselves to your own husband as a service to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, himself the Savior of his body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. So, husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, that he might present the church to himself, a glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she should be holy and, and, and faultless. Even so, husbands should love their wives as being, in a sense, their own bodies. He who loves his, his own wife loves himself. No man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it as Christ does the church. These are important words, but I want to focus on the first part of this, if, if we can today, and that is verse 22 that says, Wives, be subject and adapt yourselves to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. Now, going up a verse before that, it actually talks about how we are all to submit one to another or be subject one to another, and of course, at times, husbands should be subject to their wives. But today, we're going to talk about uh, uh, these verses that come a little bit after that. If you go down to verse 22... We'll start there for this particular session. It says, "For the uh, excuse me, for be subject. Uh, excuse me, wives. <laughs> that's, this is small print. Wives, be subject, be submissive, and adapt yourselves to your own husbands as a service to the Lord." Now, these are it's very important, very important words here. We're going to talk about them. Wives, to be subject and adapt yourself. I like that, don't you? To your husbands as a service to the Lord. Now, it says here that wives uh, should look at marriage as a service or a ministry to the Lord. I think if more wives looked at it that way, they would have less problems with, with being married. Now, again, if you can look at your job as a service to the Lord and do it, do it the Bible says do all things as unto the Lord, it will really help you at your job. It's the same thing in marriage. And of course, husbands should look at this the same way with their wives. But it says here that the wives are to be subject or adapt themselves uh, to their husbands as a service unto the Lord, not as a service to their husbands. So this is a ministry. The wife carries a ministry. The husband carries a ministry. We're going to find out that in a very real sense, you know, all of us in the body of Christ are apostolic. The word apostolic means sent. We're all sent. We're apostolic. We're not all apostles, but we're apostolic. It, we're all prophetic people. Not all of us are prophets, but all of us are prophetic because the Bible says we are. And it's the same way. There's a, there, a certain amount of it's, it's evangelistic. Same thing. Uh, we're not all evangelists, but all of us are evangelistic or should be. And it's the same way with teaching. Not all of us are teachers, but all of us should have an element of teaching because we can instruct people on some things. It's the same way with the pastoral ministry. Not all of us are pastors, but all of us have a form of pastoral duties. Uh, the wife certainly would have that with her children, and, but the husband would have that with his wife. Now, 
Uh, that's the way to look at this. We need to do these things as unto the Lord and not one another. So he says that as a service or a ministry. Then he says the wife needs to learn how to adapt. Now, this is very important, and I want to spend a little bit of time on this adapting because this is by far one of the most important things a wife should can learn when it comes to being a wife and, and uh, learning how to be married. Um, you have to learn things about your husband, like what kind of personality does he have. If a husband is a strong leader, has a strong personality, then you have to adapt to that and realize there's going to be times where he almost is overbearing a little bit and, uh, uh, you know, if the guy is real passive, you're going to have to encourage him to be stand up and be the head of the home. Uh, how's his personality? What pushes his buttons? What does he like? What does he does not like? You have to know these things so that you can adapt. You, you, don't, you don't want to say things or go down a path that causes him to get angry, you know, or to fly off the deep end because you keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, so... How do we adapt? Well, you have to adapt to his personality, but you have to understand what kind of work does he do. As an example, some of these things are very basic, but they make sense when you think about it. Um, if he's uh, <coughs> excuse me, a salesperson, as an example, and he's, or he's on the phone all day talking to people all day, a wife needs to know that so that when he comes home, maybe she can adapt a little bit, giving him some time not to have to talk so much because he's been talking on the phone all day and he's worn out that way. I think uh, husbands need to uh, do the same thing with their wives. Uh, but, but you might want to think about that. If the guy works all day at a really, really hard physical labor, a hard job where you know he's been working all day and he might be tired and physically um, uh, uh, you know, beat up, uh, you can adapt to some things understanding that. Maybe give him a neck rub, maybe give him a back rub. Uh, you know, maybe go, you know, pour him a bath or something, or if, if he takes a bath, whatever it may be. Uh, but learn to be a wife that can adapt to what he's doing because you need to understand him and uh, meet his needs that way, you see. Uh, and then another thing, too, is um, what does he like to eat? You know, today's, uh, uh, many today's wives don't cook. And you, in the Bible, that's, that's really anti-scriptural. <laughs> the Bible talks about you being a homemaker, cooking, and all these different things. We'll talk about that. I'll show you some scripture uh, in a little while. But you need to learn what he likes to eat. Fix him his favorite meal sometimes. Um, really adapt to that. Maybe you don't like what he likes to eat, but be a good wife, you learn how to adapt and fix him what he likes as uh, within reason and so on. So, um, and, and what are his interests? Let me, let me share it with you about adapting a little bit here, and I'll give you an illustration out of my own life that I think is, that I, that, that is pertinent to this. There's a thousand different ways you can adapt, ladies. One of them is, what are his interests? I remember uh, back years ago when I was growing up, my father was a, great, was a great 49er football fan. He loved the 49ers, liked to look, watch them all the time. That my mother was, she hated it. She, it almost became a a, uh, a real hard point in their marriage for many years because on Sundays, my father worked all week. He worked hard. He wanted to watch his ball game, and she would just fight him on it because she just hated the whole thing about football, you know. Well, uh, later on, I saw my my mother begin to adapt. She actually made a effort uh, to begin to sit down with him at the football because he's going to do it anyway instead of fighting him and begin to watch, learn the game, and later on became quite a fan herself and they enjoyed that together. Really, I know this is going to sound funny, but that may, that one thing that my mother did, which was very wise, may have actually saved their marriage. She actually learned how to take an interest in something that he liked, even though she didn't at first understand it and so on, she later on adapted. That's what adapting is. You know, uh, when my wife, I, uh, my wife has been gone for several months, and she's been gone quite a few times like that where I'm here alone. Most of the time, if I'm alone, if I'm going to watch any television, it'll be sports or uh, something like that, you know. But when my wife comes home, the first thing I have to do is adapt because she's going to be wanting to watch uh, the Food Channel. She's going to be wanting to watch House Hunters International and all this kind of stuff she likes. And so I have to adapt. And I'll sit down with her and, and, and adapt, uh, you know, and, 
and uh, let her watch and, and try to enjoy it myself because that's what she likes to do. Well, we need to adapt to one another. There's lots of different ways we can do this, and it's important. Now, remember, wives, your main main thing about uh, all of this is this is this uh, this adapting to is really being a friend to your husband. I want you to grab your Bible here, if you will, and let's go over to Titus chapter two. Titus chapter two. Find First Timothy and keep going right. And then you'll run into 2 Timothy and just keep going right. And you'll run to Titus. Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 I wrote down here. I hope that's right. Titus chapter 2, again, out of the Amplified Bible, verses 1 through 3. But as for you, teach what is fitting and becoming to sound wholesome doctrine, the character and right living that uh, identify true Christians. Urge the older men to be temperate, venerable, serious, sensible, self-controlled, sound in the faith and love, and the steadfastness and patience in Christ. Bid the older women, now, bid the older women similarly to be uh, reverent and devout in, a, in a de department as become uh, those engaged in sacred service, not slanders or slaves to drink. Um, they are to give good counsel, to be teachers of what is right and noble, so that they will wisely train the young women to be sane and sober of mind, temperate, disciplined, and to love their husbands and their children, to be self-controlled, chaste, homemakers. There, see, that's homemakers. That, that involves cooking, <laughs> good-natured, kind-hearted, adapting, uh, of some, uh, sub, subordinating themselves to their husband, that the word of God may be, uh, not be exposed to be reproached, blasphemed, or discredited. In the same way, we urge the younger men to be self-restrained, to behave prudently and take life seriously. Okay, so we can see here that the older women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands. You notice that verse 4? The word love there means it's not uh, the agape love that's normally used in the Bible. It's the word friendship. You, this is this is why I'm talking about adapting, learning to be a friend to your husband. Um, uh, learn his interests and, 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 and be his best friend. It's always best if the wife and the husband can be best friends, can learn how to adapt to one another and do things they like, they cherish one with another, no matter what it is. You can learn how to uh, have a compromise and adapt in that area. So this is very important. Being a friend to your husband is probably the most important thing that I could ever teach a wife because, husband, uh, because a man really needs that person to stand by them and to be an unconditional friend that way. So this is very important. So... This, this is something that we need to learn. Now, go back to Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to make some other statements here in this particular session. And girls, again, I'm not picking on you, but we're starting with you because the Bible starts with you here in this scripture. <coughs> we'll go through the men, too, as we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry air. Dry air in Wisconsin in the wintertime. I'll tell you that right now. Now let's go back over here and read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 through 24 again. It says, Be subject one to another out of reverence for Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And it says, Wives, be subject, be submissive, and adapt yourselves to your own husband as service to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, himself the Savior of his body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in, in everything to their husbands. Okay, we're going to stop there. Now, this is very important because a lot has been said about submission and uh, subjection here, as the word is used. And, and, and it's been taken out of context and taken out of place. First of all, when you read these scriptures, you must understand that Paul is not writing to the world. Okay, he's writing to Christians here. Born again, spirit-filled Christians. How do we know? Well, all you have to do is back up and look at verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 5. Wherefore, he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Notice. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me again. Oh. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, and so on. Giving thanks, and then he goes into submitting, and he goes into the, 
uh, it's all based on spirit-filled life. So you can't expect a worldly person to know how to do this properly, and you can't expect somebody that's not a believer to do it properly. God expects the believers to do it properly, and he expects us to understand. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to born-again, spirit-filled people in born-again, spirit-filled marriages. Certainly a wife is never expected to, do, to submit to her husband in anything evil. And a lot of people don't understand the difference. A lot of men have misused the scripture to try to control the wife or make the wife do something that she doesn't feel comfortable in doing. This may be something like going to bars with him when she doesn't feel like she should be doing that. Or a drinking with him when she doesn't feel she should be doing that. Things like that. Or maybe he has some kind of thing he wants to do her, uh, do with her in the bedroom sexually that she's not comfortable with. And men, you'd be very wise to talk these things over with your wife and to make sure that she's comfortable because really the burden's on you when it says uh, uh, the, the, man, the man is the head of the home and he needs to love or agape his wife as Christ loved the church, which we'll talk about later. So submission is never control. Submission is never dominating like we see in the Middle Eastern countries. Uh, and we see a lot of times where these women wear these the stuff over their head and they can't ever talk and they, they still beat their wives and all that kind of foolishness. God never intended that. <coughs> God was a great liberator. Christ is a great liberator of women. He doesn't hold them in bondage by this. The word subject here simply means that you, 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 you understand your position in the marriage. In, in, as far as Christ is concerned, being a Christian, the wife has the same amount of rights and privileges as the man. And by the way, there's no scripture that says all women have to submit to all men. That's just ridiculous. Whenever it says that, it's talking about husbands and wife. It's very clear, unless you don't rightly divide the word. So it's not never talking about something that is just, uh, you know, uh, you know, a general statement. Because all women have the same rights and privileges. There's no male or female in the Lord. You have the same right to answer prayer. You have the same right, praise God, to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. You have the same right to pray. You have the same right uh, to uh, uh, be in a fivefold ministry gift. Now, don't take the submission thing out of context and hold people in bondage. Some Christians, it's religious junk that's the worst thing in the world to try to hold people in bondage with the Bible and make it say something it doesn't say. Remember, God is a God of love. God has got a liberty and grace and mercy, and he's not going to want anybody to be in bondage. A wife should never have to submit or stay with a man who beats her. A wife should never have to submit or, or even stay in a marriage where the husband is, is a drunkard or a dope addict, you know, and, and is beating the children or abusing the children. A wife never, never should have to do that. He's talking to spirit-filled Christian men and women here who should be walking closely with the Lord and walking in the right kind of lifestyle. So, first of all, though, he says, be subject one to another. I've always had women on my board. Now, you know, a lot of people go haywire. They use certain scriptures. Oh, you can't have a woman, you know, in a position of leadership like that or on the board. I think that women on the board have given me as much good wisdom as guys do, you know. And it's the same way in my marriage. If I'm going to do something, I always get my wife's opinion before I do it because she's smarter than I am in a lot of ways. She has wisdom. She looks at things differently than I do. And you should always be like that husband. And so we are to submit one to another. And sometimes I need to submit to my wife. There's nothing wrong with me being subjected to my wife. But the Bible says that she needs to submit to you as her husband in the marriage uh, um, family. And uh, again, never means to control or be in bondage. But it means to, to be uh, out of reverence for Christ to submit to your husband. Because he is the head of the home here. He's the head or the leader, the wife, the children. Not a dictator, but a leader. Now, let me say this to you. Many, many times, if we have a passive man, a wife will begin to have to try to lead where she's not really called to in the family unit. This is unfortunate because what happens then, she'll open herself up to uh, some kind of a, a Jezebel spirit or controlling spirit. And there's nothing more repulsive than a woman who wears the pants in the family or vice versa. See, the, man is, uh, the Christian man is to be the head of his home and take responsibility that way. It wasn't, it, it's not in, uh, God didn't put that in the, in the wife's nature to do. 
in her nature is 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 a, a more of a of a, um, a, a a submissive role in the family unit, and to, and and to take care of the children and all that doesn't mean she can't be a leader outside of the marriage unit, or be a worker outside the marriage unit and be a leader. It's, but in the family unit, this is the way God instructed it to be. So you need to understand it, and realize it. So the husband is the head of the wife, and he needs to learn how to take that role. And let me tell you something, husbands. If you learn how to love your wife, and I'll end with this today, if you learn how to love your wife, it won't be hard for her to learn how to submit or be sub subjective. Most wives uh, will, will respond very well when a husband begins to be the head of the home. Now, uh, if, if a wife is is having to be dominant in all of this, it needs to change. And so what I would suggest you do, uh, especially uh, wives, if you have a husband who's very passive and just won't take his role seriously, show him this uh, video uh, series, <laughs> number one. But number two, small things. Get him, uh, encourage him to pray with you uh, over meals and so on and so forth and to stand up. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we take things out of context anyway. Sure, a husband should uh, take the headship in the home and, and when it comes to prayer and, and spiritual things. But let me tell you something that's not really talking about that here as much as it is the natural things. Um, overseeing the home, being the one who has to make the final decisions, uh, the financial decisions, the, the, you know, being, you know, all of those type of things. A husband's role is really to, to shepherd his family, as a, as a pastor his family. Uh, and and uh, that, that is really true. And the wife, she is the one who's going to uh, really do a lot of the shepherding or the pasturing of the children and uh, uh, the, the uh, taking care of the home and uh, uh, being involved in that aspect. And you can work together to come to an agreement on who does what and submit to one another in these things. And, uh, you know, it, it will be good for you and your, your, your family. But wives, I want to give you a little bit of homework. I want you to write that word down, adapt. And I want you to work on that. How can you better adapt to your husband? Just just write down maybe one to ten, and 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 ask the Lord to give you maybe ten things, maybe five things, or whatever that really you can begin to do to adapt to your husband in a greater way. If you do that, I believe you'll have great success. Till next time, this is Pastor Tom. I love you, and I'm praying for you. God bless you. We love you.